Welcome back. We're going to start with this example here where Morgan puts $100 into one account with a 5% simple interest rate for 100 days, $200 into another account with a 6% simple interest rate for eight months, and $300 into a third account with 7% simple interest for two years and three months. How much does each account accumulate over their respective time periods? Which accounts accumulate more with their simple interest rates than they would if they had a compound interest rate? Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So let's do each part of this problem one at a time. And so we'll start with her first account. And in her first account, she deposits $100 with a 5% simple interest rate for 100 days. So the first thing we wanna do here is remember that we are working with simple interest. So the equation we're going to be using is the future value is equal to that initial deposit times one plus the interest rate times our time value, and that's going to be our calculation. And so for her first account, she deposits $100. So her future value is going to be equal to that deposit of $100 times one plus her simple interest rate of 5%, which in decimal form would be 0 0.05 times her time in years, which is given to us in days. We have a hundred days. And unless a problem states otherwise, we are always going to assume that a simple interest rate is occurring annually, which means our time also needs to be measured in years. And the easiest way to convert this into a rate of years is to know how many days are in a year. Well, we know that in a regular year, there are 365 days. So we can write that t equals a fraction of 100 days divided by those 365 days. So we'll have our interest rate multiplied by 100 divided by 365. And that is going to work in this case. That is our time in years. So even though it is less than a year, we are able to represent it with a fraction since we know how many days are in a year. And so if we plug this into our calculator, remembering to multiply our interest rate by our time before we add one, this is going to be equal to $101.37. And so that would be how much she accumulates in her first account over 100 days. So then let's look at account number two. In this case, she puts $200 with a 6% simple interest rate for eight months. So let's start our calculation for that one. We're going to have that the future value equals her initial deposit of $200 times one plus the interest rate, which in this case is a simple interest rate of 6%, so 0 0.06 times the amount of time. Now in this case, our time is given to us in months. We have eight months. And so in this case, we also need to convert this into an amount of time in years. And we know that there are 12 months in a year. And so we can write this as a fraction of eight months divided by 12 months. And that's going to give us our amount of time in years. And so then if we calculated this in our calculator, we would find that this is equal to $208. And so now let's look at her third account. We'll have account three. And in her third account, she deposits $300 with a 7% simple interest rate for two years and three months. So we're going to have that the future value is equal to her initial deposit of $300 times one plus the interest rate, the simple interest rate, right? In this case, it is 7%. So we're gonna have 0 0.07, and that's going to be multiplied the amount of time in years. Now, in this case, we have two years and three months. And so how do we write that in years? Well, we can do it very similarly to how we did our previous one, right? We had eight months, so we represented that out of 12, right? Because there are 12 months in a year. Well, we can do the same thing for this since it's given to us in months. We know that there's 12 months in a year. And so two years would be 24 months. And then if we add those extra three months, we would have 27 months. So we could write this as 27 divided by 12. And that would represent our amount of time in years. This accounts for two years and three months. And if we plug that into the calculator, we will find that she will accumulate $347.25. So now there's one more part to this question. It asks us which accounts accumulate more with their simple interest rates than they would if they had compound interest rates instead. And so this is where we need to be reminded of a very important concept. 
So if you recall, if you happen to have watched our lesson, if not, I'm going to refresh you right here. If we were to graph the accumulation factors for compound interest and simple interest, we would find that compound interest is an exponential function and simple interest is a linear function. And because of that, during the first year or time before the first year ends, simple interest is going to generate more interest for an account than compound interest would. But if we are looking at a time period after one year, right, it's larger than one year, right, maybe two years or three years, compound interest is going to generate more interest. And so if we're asked which accounts accumulate more with their simple interest rates than they would if they had a compound interest rate, all we have to do is look to see which of these accounts were generating interest for a time period less than one year, because that is going to be when simple interest generates more. So let's look at each account. Account one took place over a hundred days. That's less than a year. So because the time in account one is less than one year, that means that this generated more interest in this time period than it would have if it had a compound interest rate. For account two, we also looked at a time period that was less than a year. We had eight months out of 12 months that are in a year. So in this case, time was also less than one year. And so this account, account two, also earned more interest than it would have if it had a compound interest rate. And then finally, if we look at account three, we see that in this case, we had two years and three months. And so this one, the time was greater than one year. And so this account would have earned more interest if it had a compound rate rather than a simple interest rate. So hopefully that makes sense. Because of the behavior of these accumulation functions, we can determine which type of interest rate would earn more interest depending on the amount of time that an account is active. For our next example, we have Jill deposits $400 into an account with an interest rate of I divided by two compounded semi-annually, and her friend James deposits $700 into an account with a simple interest rate I annually. They both earn the same amount of interest during the last six months of the fifth year. Find the value of i. And so this is a very challenging problem. This really tries to make sure that you understand what a simple interest rate is and what a compound interest rate is. And so let's dissect this problem piece by piece and figure out how we're going to set up an equation in order to solve it. So let's first focus on Jill here because we have two people. We have Jill and we have James. Let's just focus on Jill to start. We know that she deposits $400 into an account that has an interest rate of I divided by two. So we don't really know what that I is, but we do know that it is a semi-annual compound rate. So let's write down that. We'll have Jill and she has a deposit of C equal to 400 and her interest rate is equal to I divided by two, and it is compounded semi-annually. So the only thing we're missing here is a time period. How long is this $400 in Jill's account? Well, we find out at the very end of our problem. It says that the two of them earn the same amount of interest during the last six months of the fifth year. So we're talking about five years here. So overall, we are looking at a time period of five years. However, we're going to really focus on those last six months because we're going to want to equate the amount of interest that they're earning during that period. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring forward her account up to those last six months. So what we're going to do is for now, just look at the first four and a half years, right? Because six months would be a half year. Let's just start by calculating up to the four and a half year mark, and then we'll worry about the last six months. So for right now, our time is going to be equal to 4.5. So now let's talk about James. For James, his initial deposit is going to be $700. So his C is equal to 700. And then his interest rate is a simple interest rate of I annually. So he just has I, which is a simple interest rate. And for him, we're also going to be looking at the first four and a half years, right? So T equals 4.5. Now, one more thing that we forgot to mention is that since this interest rate for Jill is compounded semi-annually, we need to take account for that with our amount of time. This is a semi-annual rate, so our amount of time also needs to be represented semi-annually. So currently, our amount of time is represented in years of 4.5, so how many times would it be compounded if it was semi-annual? Well, it would be two times the amount of years, and our t is going to be equal to nine 
for Jill's case, which means it's going to be compounded nine times in that four and a half year period. So now let's start setting up our equations, right? If we were going to set up our future value for Jill, we would have 400, our initial deposit, times one plus her interest rate of I over two, and then compounding it to the amount of time that we're interested in. In this case, those nine semi-annual periods. So we'll have nine. And then let's look at James. I'm gonna write his work over on this side. He has $700. And that's also going to be in for four and a half years. So we would have one plus his simple interest rate of I times the amount of time 4.5. Now, this would be if we were looking for the future value of each of their accounts. However, we aren't looking for the future value. We are looking for the amount of interest that they earned during the last six months of the fifth year. So I want you to quickly think back to our previous example where we looked at how the accumulation factor for compound interest was an exponential function, but the accumulation factor for a simple interest rate was a linear function. Because of that, a simple interest rate increases at a constant rate every year. And so we aren't actually interested in knowing James's future value because he has a simple interest rate. Instead, what we can do is just look at how much interest he earned in a one half year period. So instead of writing this, let's multiply his $700 by the interest rate times the amount of time, which in this case is going to be one half for those six months, right? We are looking at the last six months of the fifth year. Forget about the fifth year part. We just wanna know how much interest James is going to earn in a one half year period a six month period. And this would be that amount because simple interest increases at a constant rate. We don't need to worry about the previous amount of time. We just need to find how much interest he would earn in a one half year period. But that's not going to be the same thing for Jill because Jill has a compounded interest rate and compound interest rates earn more interest exponentially. It is an exponential function. And so because it's going to earn more interest every period, we have to take into account those first four and a half years. That's why I really emphasized this four and a half year period. And so that's what this is right here. This is going to accumulate Jill's account up until the four and a half year. And so now if we just multiply by her interest rate of I over two, we are going to find how much interest she'll earn in those last six months. And if that doesn't make sense, let me try to explain this one more time. This part right here is her accumulation up to the four and a half year mark. And since we wanna know how much interest he earned in the last six months, we can just take this total amount and multiply it by her interest rate. And that's gonna give us how much interest she will earn for those last six months. And that works because this is a semi-annual rate which takes place every six months. So now we have what we're looking for. We have an expression that represents how much interest Jill is going to earn in the last six months of the fifth year. And we also have an expression for how much interest James is going to earn in the last six months of the fifth year. And we know that they earn the same amount during that time. And so because they earn the same amount, we can set these two expressions equal to each other. Because as they currently stand, we can't calculate them because we do not know what I is. But now since we know that these two expressions are equal because they both represent the amount of interest they earn in that last six months and the problem tells us that it's going to be the same, we can now solve for I by setting these two equal to each other. And finding I is what this problem wants us to do. So let's simplify our equation here and see what we can do to solve for I. We're gonna have 400 times one plus I over two to the ninth power times I over two, and this is going to be equal to 700 times I over two, right? If we multiply this I times this one half, we'll have I over two. And now you can see that on both sides of the equation, we have this factor of I over two. So if we divide both sides by I over two, they're going to cancel and we will be left with 700 equal to this expression. So let's clean up our work a little bit and then we will finish solving for i. All right, so now we're going to have that 400 times one plus i over two to the ninth power is equal to 700. So now if we divide both sides by 400, we will have that one plus i over two to the ninth power is equal to seven fourths, right? 700 divided by 400 would reduce to seven fourths. And now all we have to do to finish this problem is take the ninth root of both sides of the equation to cancel out this ninth power. 
and then we'll be able to finish it fairly quickly. So we'll have 1 plus i over 2 is equal to 1.06415 and some more decimals, which is what we get from taking 7 fourths to the 1 ninth power. And then if we subtract 1 from both sides and then multiply by 2 to cancel out this 2 in the bottom here, we will find that i is equal to 0.1283 or 12.83%. And finally, we have our answer to this problem. So this is a very difficult problem. I tried my best to explain to you the process of how we get to this result. The hardest part of these problems is setting up the equation to solve for your variable. So hopefully that made sense and you're ready to move on to our next example, which is a lot easier. Finally, let's look at this example. We have Joanna placed money in an account earning 5% annual simple interest for the time interval from two to three, what is the effective annual interest rate? So this one seems a little weird too, although it is a lot easier than the previous example, because this is actually going to use an equation that we learned in an earlier lesson. Because notice the key sentence here, what is the effective annual interest rate? That's the key sentence because that takes us right back to how do we calculate the effective annual interest rate. And one of the last ways that we learned to calculate that was with this equation. We had i is equal to the accumulation at time t minus the accumulation at time t minus one divided by the accumulation at time t minus one. So as long as we were looking at an interval of one year, right, from t minus one to t, we could find the effective annual interest rate. But it's a little bit different in this case because we're told that we have a 5% annual simple interest rate rather than a compound rate. Well, what do we know about simple interest? Well, we know that the accumulation factor for that interest is equal to one plus the interest rate times the amount of time. And if we were to set up that equation where we have a of t is equal to a of zero times the accumulation factor, we can actually use this to help us find our annual effective interest rate. Notice that it says Joanna placed money in an account, but it doesn't tell us how much. So we can kind of make up that amount because it's not going to matter in this case. So let's just say that it was one. So we don't even need this initial deposit zero, it's just one. So then we just have that our accumulation at time t is equal to the accumulation factor. Because in the end, if we plugged this in for each accumulation here in this equation, they would all have that common factor of that initial deposit anyway, so it would just be canceled out and it wouldn't matter. So we don't need to worry about that. Instead, what we can notice is that this accumulation will be equal to the accumulation factor. And so since we have a simple interest rate, and we know that the accumulation factor is equal to this, we can use that and plug in what we know to solve for the annual effective interest rate. And so what does that look like? Well, first off, remember that our time interval here is from two to three. So we are going to have that this is equal to the accumulation at time three minus the accumulation at time two divided by the accumulation at time two. And so then if we use this information down here, this would be equal to one plus the interest rate, which we said is 5%, so 0 0.05, times t equals three, minus one plus 0 0.05 times two. And that will be divided by one plus 0 0.05 times two. And so then if we were to simplify each one of these quantities and then plug it into our calculator, we would find that i is equal to 0 0.04545, or 4.5. 5%. And so that would be the annual effective interest rate for this scenario with a 5% annual simple interest rate from year two to year three. So I hope that that made sense. This is an unusual problem, but it's not out of the realm of possibility of something that you might come across throughout this course. The key giveaway usually that you're going to be using this formula is when you get a time interval like this that takes place between a time of just one year, right? We went from year two to year three, which is just a difference of one year. So it made sense to use this formula. All right, so those are all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, I know that that second problem was really hard. If you still don't understand and you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will try to get to those and answer them. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.